What's up, yo? Big Cat 305 here. Today is a big day for us. We hit a thousand subscribers. A thousand! In just a little over six months. That's awesome. Thank you all so much for subscribing, liking, commenting. I really appreciate it. And today we're going to be cooking Philly cheesesteaks on the Blackstone. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, I was able to pick up these beautiful thin sliced ribeyes at Publix for ten twenty nine per pound. I also picked up this Kuma knife on Amazon. The link is in the description below, and this thing is a really good knife. Cuts super smooth, very uh, nice, nice weight to it. And you'll see here, it just goes right through the meat like nothing. Basically, you want to cut through and get rid of all the fat. You want to get rid of that silver skin that's in there and clean it up as nice as you can. It's actually a little bit easier to do when they're not already thin sliced, but I got such a good deal on them that I decided to just go for it. Um, so you want to cut them into nice thin strips. I froze this steak for about 45 minutes before I started this process. It makes it a little bit easier when you slice it. Um, and then you just want to cut nice thin strips after you get the fat taken off. You go direction number one. Uh, and then you want to turn it 90 degrees and then cut it into basically cubes. So we get to the end here, turn it sideways, 90 degrees, and then basically just slice it again all the way through. And you could do this on the griddle, which I've done in the past, but this makes it a little bit easier uh, for prep time, uh, cook time, you name it. And let me tell you, it came out <laughs> amazing. So I, I, I like this way better, just saying. So any other little pieces of fat you find as you're cutting through, just get rid of them. Just toss them off to the side. And that's how you can cut them. So we'll fast forward just a little bit to get through the process. And here's the finished product. Looks absolutely beautiful. Ingredients time. So we have our cheese whiz. It's not actually cheese whiz. It's cheese dip that I got from Aldi's for less than $2. If you buy actual cheese whiz from Publix, it's $5. It's the same stuff. Just a hint. The bread, that beautiful bread there, I got at BJ's. A dozen of those rolls for four dollars they were awesome bottom right I have some provolone middle bottom I've got some chopped white onions and then on the left I have the ribeye that we talked about already uh, which I got on sale for 10 29 a pound some oil some water some pepper and some salt and that's it very simple ingredients uh, this is <laughs> An amazing dish from Philly. I'm not trying to make it better. I'm trying to actually replicate what these guys and gals do in Philly because it's such an awesome sandwich. Um, I'm sure I'll get some feedback what I did wrong or what I did right. It's all good. Uh, but we start by putting our onions down and get those nice and browned before we continue. All 
Onions are down, just like always. You just want to mix them up a little bit, stir them around, get them uh, nice and lubed up with that oil. And we just want to get these a little bit caramelized before we actually add them to the meat because these take a little bit longer to cook than the meat, not much. But that's it, we just spread them around nice and evenly, get them nice and happy. All right, so it's been uh, about a minute or so. Just want to stir them up. Like I said, you want to cook these. Nothing fancy, nothing special really. The ingredients are very plain. Um, when I say plain, like not too many ingredients, so that's a good thing. I love onions, I cook them all the time. So we just want to get these a little bit browned on the outside, not too much. And like I said, we just want to get them caramelized. We're going to add some salt here, put some spices on them, add some fresh ground pepper. Finally got my pepper mill to start working. So here we have a um, little pot. We're going to put some cheese whiz in. And we're going to get that nice and heated up on the grill or griddle. And those onions are going to continue to cook. You want to get that uh, cheese in there early because it takes a little bit of time to heat up. So I want to take this opportunity, you know, a thousand subscribers. <laughs> that's amazing. And I would not have been able to do it without my my partner in life. She's, uh, she's the camera woman, the producer, the director, set design, you name it. She does it all. And most importantly, she is my partner and... She makes it much easier. She makes it a lot more fun. And that's why I think we're having some success here is because uh, we're a great team and uh, I love her to death. So we'll keep on cooking and, uh, you know, <laughs> I could not do it without her. So thank you very much, babe. I love you. All right, continuing on. So we move the onions over and make some room for the next main ingredient which of course is the beef so we add a little bit of oil we're going to spread that out a little bit grills on i would say medium to medium high at this point and we're just going to put it down look at those beautiful cubes i mean that's a good looking ribeye right there absolutely beautiful you can see there's a, there's some fat in there which is where you're going to get the flavor but it's still you know it's not crazy fat it's a little bit lean at the same time it's it's a nice nice mixture of a uh, diced up ribeye there so here, uh, you want to spread them out, and then you're going to season them with some salt and some ground pepper. That's it. Nothing crazy here. Salt and pepper. And that's it. We're going to start flipping it. So while the steak gets a little bit browned on the bottom, we're going to stir up that cheese. Make sure it's getting nice and creamy. If you just leave it at room temperature, it's just going to stay like paste. But uh, you heat it up a little bit and it gets nice and, uh, nice and creamy. So we have our onions off to the side, staying nice and chilled. And when I say chilled, warm. I know, chilled isn't warm, but it is in this, thing, in this case. So. There we go. So let's mix these up a little bit. You can see a little bit of color. Looking good. I 
Oh, that looks amazing. Let me tell you, the key to cheese steaks is the quality of the meat. You don't have to use crazy quality meat, but ribeyes, New York strip, those are good. You try to use some of the other cheaper ones to save a couple bucks, it's not worth it, let me tell you. This makes a huge difference. So here we go, we're gonna add our, now the meat's brown, we're gonna add the, uh, the onions into the meat mixture and we're gonna toss that all up together and get them nice and uh, combined. So we don't wanna overcook the meat either because by the time you're done adding the cheese and melting the cheese and flipping it and all that stuff, it's gonna cook more. And even after it's done and you've already put it in the bun, it's gonna to continue to cook. So you wanna be a little bit, uh, I'd say about 10 to 15% less cooked than you actually want it to be when you're done. So these are pretty much ready. I mean, they look great. So at this point, I'm gonna split them up into piles and we're gonna set these suckers up with some cheese. But look at that, a little close up. Nice bubbling, nice sizzling. Oh, these are gonna be outstanding. Look at the cheese. <laughs> look at that cheese. That is ready to go. So that's what you want the onions and the meat to look like before you add the cheese, right there. So to prep our buns, um, we're gonna have one with the cheese whiz, which is gonna be mine, and then the other two are just gonna have the provolone. So, going off of what I've learned from watching the guys in Philly, and gals in Philly, you spread the cheese whiz on the buns, or bread, and we'll come back to that. So here we go, one more stir, one more flip, one more moving the meat around, stir it up, toss it up, and then we're gonna split these up into three even piles, making three subs here. It's about uh, almost two pounds of meat, by the way. It was 1.8 something, I can't remember exactly. So, you do the math, pretty hefty. And those buns aren't huge, those are like, six seven inches so they're not big buns we got a lot of meat so that's another thing I learned with my research is you don't want to skimp on the meat you want them to be nice and packed meat and cheese by the way so there we go spreading them out Kind of getting them in the shape that you want them to be and that is it then we move that cheese out of the way a little bit and here we go we're gonna add our provolone three nice size slices to the two that are gonna be provolone So we add three slices to each. I did not use smoked provolone, I used regular provolone. And we are gonna cover these up to get them nice and melted with the grill dome. Add a little bit of water in here, steam them up. Make some steam up nicely and melt that cheese. And they're gonna be awesome. Let's check, oh my goodness, look at that provolone. Ho, 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 
that looks beautiful so those are ready to come off the griddle so here we go again learn from Philly watching the the videos and checking out uh, what they do over there oh look at that you put the buns on top you get your big long spatula and slide underneath, flip it on over, and oh, look at that thing. <laughs> that is beautiful. <laughs> I love it. That looks outstanding. And what I did was I just wrapped them up in some tin foil I had off to the side to keep them nice and hot. Look at that. Boom. Just like a regular sub shop over here. Philly cheese number two, provolone, boom, look at that. Provolone's melting all over the place. Burning my hand, love it. Wrap it up nice and tight. Next order up. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. And then last but not least, is big cats Philly cheese with the cheese whiz get it nice I got the extras that fell off the edges I don't know if you guys noticed that but I kind of planned that here we go cheese whiz on the bun down slide it flip it look at that browning on the top Melt the cheese whiz right on top, dripping. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Look at that. Oh, <laughs> that is insane right there. Whoo-wee! I cannot wait to open up this ooh, super hot package. Special delivery. 1,000 subscribers. Thanks again, everybody. I'm so excited. Uh, the channel's doing great. I love doing this. This is my passion. I love it. And we're going to keep on cooking. But for now, we're going to open up the package. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Look at this cheesy deliciousness oh can you see that let's go ahead and cut her in half oh that is loaded up with cheese I think I'm going to need a whole roll of paper towels to eat this monster Philly cheese. Mm. Here we go. Big bite. Mmm. 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 <laughs> mmm. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, again, I'm going to need a whole roll. Wow, that is amazing. What a sandwich. Absolutely delicioso from Philly. Thank you, Philly. I try my best to make it authentic. I'm a, you know, one-eighth Latin guy here in Miami, so I did my best. But uh, hopefully I did you guys right. If not, let me know in the comments. I appreciate all feedback. Good feedback, hopefully. Constructive criticism, okay, I'll take it. Bad feedback, that's fine too. Whatever you got, let's go. I wanna get better, so this came out awesome. Um, hope you guys uh, tried it yourself. Very easy to do, especially on the Blackstone. So again, 1,000 subscribers, I love it. Thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, and we'll keep on cooking.
Big Cat out.